What's going on, folks? Welcome back to the show. Um, we got snow on the ground and stuff. And uh, I've already spooled up fresh line on rods that have needed it, you know. Um, so I'm running out of things to do. But one thing that I wanted to do today is uh, I picked up two of one of my favorite crankbaits that I didn't have the colors of, obviously. And that was uh, the Rapala DT16. I got the Caribbean Shad right here. And then I got Mr. Penguin right there. So I'm gonna show y'all um, the type of hooks that I use. And uh, luckily I had four left in a pack that got these writ names written all over it. So let's go. Because why? Because fishes um, need to stay in water. And because who am I? The fishing pro. Uh, but what do you call me? Boogerhead. That's right. All right. So with this here uh, DT16, what I'm going to do is take off the stock hooks. And yes, I know they are for VMC stock hooks. Now, I normally roll with these because you can get, don't ask me why they only put 15 hooks when if they put 16, you would get an even number of baits rigged up. But yeah, they give you 15 for... I think they went from $4.44 to a little over 5 so that it hasn't gone up too bad. And they're American made hooks, they're Eagle Claw, they're just the Fletcher Shryock Signature EWG 2X, great treble hook for crankbaits. But I reached in and I remembered I had four, I have four of these left and they're size fours and it's the duo realis nano hook and then i mean these things are friggin sharp it doesn't have the same kind of bend it's more of like a you know it's just a different bend than the ewg i can't remember the name of that bend but we're gonna try it out on these two baits here and uh, go from there. So you will need your handy dandy split ring pliers, your replacement hooks, and your favorite bait of choice to put better hooks on. And I just use factory split rings because one thing uh, you don't want to do is knock this thing too far out of it's original, you know, factory tuning. So, you know, hook weights, it's important to kind of match that. That way the bait will run the same, the way it's designed to run. So I always feel, you know, I, I don't have a dang postal scale, but I, I can get one and I will. But I always make sure that my replacement hook isn't heavier than the stock hook. So I take the front one off first. It really don't matter what order you go in, it's whatever's comfortable for you.
I have a special place in my heart for the DT-16 because I've caught a lot of big fish on this bait right here. Don't ask me how I got my freaking split ring pliers that stretched out like that, but... Just usually it never happens with me. I'm pretty fast with, with these. But figures you go to record something and uh, end up having problems. So I'm gonna take the stock hooks, tuck them in the garbage can where they belong. And then since I had to stretch that factory split ring out a little bit, what I'm gonna do is take that and of my uh, split ring pliers here and just squeeze the tension back on them. Kind of like move around it and try to get as many point of, points of contact you can with the split ring, split ring and just squeeze, squeeze it back taut. Work your way around it back to the beginning. Because last thing you want that thing to do is to, you know, the hook to come halfway undone on you uh, or something. Especially with these nippers in cold weather. They nip at that back of the, of the bait. So it's good to have a nice sharp hook with a good bite on it. I'm just gonna do the same thing, work it around. And then pinch again. Make sure. Give it a little bit of elbow grease with the pinch. belly hook here we're gonna spin our split ring around so the opening is at the top we are going to make our opening here take the last of our And there we have it. So I'm not going to crimp, you know, squeeze too hard to make it fold on itself. But you do want to squeeze. And then what I do is I move the hook back and forth to make sure it's not catching on anything that's still too far open. Like this right here needs it. And I'll be repeating the process for this guy. So I just wanted to keep it short and sweet, guys. It always helps, especially with crankbaits that you have a lot of confidence in or any crankbait in general to, unless you are buying a, an expensive crankbait or a sixth cent crankbait or, or any other one that already comes with EWGs you can catch a couple fish first and you don't have to go right to changing uh, hooks you know what I mean but uh, as far as a lot of these you know deep cranking man you, you want that bait to be in optimum shape down there because that's where the giants are and um, anytime I pull up on clear water, I don't care if it's 90 degrees out or 35 degrees out. I'm pulling out a DT something. 
All right, folks, this will be technique of the week. Number six, upgrading your treble hooks on deep crankbaits. Um, it's something to do to pass the time when it's just not optimal fishing conditions. You know what I mean? It's not froze over so you can't go ice fish. It's not, it's all churned up. Because, you know, all these instabilities in the weather patterns. So, it gives you time to catch up on, like, real maintenance and stuff like that. So, maybe that's what we'll get into next is uh, breaking down a spinning reel. And showing... I'll show you guys how I clean my spinning reels or something. Yep. I got a couple other tricks to show you too. So, technique of the week number six. This is Brian from Guy with the GoPro Fishing Show. Out for now. But just for now. Be easy, people. And be good to each other. <laughs>